Top of the morning, I tell you. And here we are, back in Ireland again. And after some fine local country hospitality, I'm looking forward to some of the wonderful fishing to be found here on the River Shannon system. For perch, rudd, pike, and lots of big bream. There you are, down you go. <laughs> this is a wonderful spot here. Before me, you've got Loch Derg, 26 miles long, and the River Shannon runs right the way through it. So that either side, you've got these huge, sumptuous big bays full of lilies and full of fish. It's a lovely way of fishing, it's just easing the tackle out on the pole. I don't do a lot of pole fishing these days, but when I do, I always enjoy it. I actually grew up pole fishing on the, the lee, and in those days it was wooden poles. Of course now, fortunately, it's... Oh, whoops, missed that one. <laughs> very light carbon, and uh, it's so much easier to, to hold very long ones. Hello, I think we've got the... First cruiser of the day coming by. If this was the broads at the moment, I think we would have seen 200, but this is the actual first one this morning that has come through the swim. Perhaps it might even improve things. You never know. As anglers in Norfolk think that when a cruiser goes through, it disturbs the water and, and the fish bite momentarily. It probably washes all the the ground bait and all the loose bits of corn and maggots and things off the bottom. This is where you've got to look very carefully behind you to see what's going to float away. Because these banks here are so flat, I'm going to have to be a bit careful if one comes in very close and sets up a, a couple of heavy troughs, otherwise it will go. Not a lot of wash from that boat at all. Now, let's see if it's made a difference. Yes, it has. <laughs> Would you believe it? <laughs> what have we got? Oh, no, it's another perch. I thought there for a second that... <laughs> the rudder had moved in again. Momentarily, even those little tiny perch shake their heads so hard you tend to think they're actually bigger than what they are. There's that Coleman again, he went about 50, 60 yards under the water then, I saw him out of the corner of my eye. Unbelievable speed underwater they've got. Little fish don't stand a chance. But then it's a good thing this river's so rich and it can with stand water birds that feed on the fish. Many of the lakes in, in my local part of Norfolk these days get 10, 20 cormorants on a five or 10 acre lake for a winter and they can almost wipe out the shells of small fish. I've seen it happen too many times. And clubs that have put a lot of work in over the years get their water raped in just one winter. But then I suppose if we We've tended to rape the North Sea over the last 30, 40 years. We're only asking seabirds to come inland. And cormorants are one of the seabirds that are spending more and more time inland these days. Oh, well, nothing's touching that. That's surprising. Where are these rudd now, I wonder? I'm inclined to think that a pike could have moved in the swim, but. And again, I don't think the little perch would be hanging around if there was a big old Esox line on the bottom. It's a very big pike in this river. Huge great pike, but so few people fish it these days for pike. It's, it's really the bream angler's paradise, the Shannon. And of course, people like me who love to catch rat as well. Hello, this isn't a perch. 
Oh, it's a lovely rat. Beautiful fish rat. Not a massive one, but looks about 12 ounces. Beautiful fish. Skimming across the net. Careful. Don't want the hook to come out. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Look at that. Isn't that absolutely glorious? <laughs> Look at that dog over there, he's loving a boat ride. I bet he wish he was steering. <laughs> the nice thing about the pole, especially a long one in these sort of conditions when you're fishing right underneath the tip, is the fact that you can hold the line downstream and allow the float to trot through naturally with what little flow there is about as opposed to holding back if you keep a tight line with the wind bashing against the pole it's jerking the float a little bit too much and it's it ruins the natural presentation so you keep the line downstream and let the float just run through with with the flow although this wind's holding up the flow considerably it's just about enough to give a nice presentation oh, here we are ah a good bream at last. Go on, I'm going to have to be careful with this one. God, they don't know how to pull in this current. <laughs> it just feels like what they are, an enormous great slab. I'm going to have to put some side strain. Holding that up against the wind isn't doing me any favours at all. Come on, up you come. Oh. <laughs> Incredible. Power. Oh, there. Oh, that's a good fish. Look at that. Come on. Up, up you come. He's finished. Yes. Get the net. Ah. Oh, it's nice getting a good bream on the pole. Yes. Oh. Oh. I wonder when one of these better bream are going to put in an appearance. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, they're lovely dark fish, these Irish bream. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Look at that, it's a clonker, probably about four pounds. Hook's only just in too. Lovely. But as you can see, I've left the fishing for a spell come to have a look at one of the many interesting castles found within this Shannon area. It's a lovely old place called Redwood Castle. And it was first built by the Normans in around about 1200. But today, it's owned by the McEgans. Let's go and see if they're in. I bet on a dark and windy night, this is a very foreboding looking place. High up on the hill here, overlooking the entire Shannon region. Built by the Normans, definitely for defence. Very few windows. Ah, Mr. McKeegan, I believe. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. As we say in Ireland, Cade Neil of I won't try and repeat that. <laughs> Hello. That's a nice uh, place you've that, got here. Most unusual, isn't it? It is. Well, it's got a lot of history attached to it. Uh -huh. It belonged to my people from 1350 to 1640, mm -hmm. when the English Burned it down. Oh dear, did we really? <laughs> yeah. Never mind, don't let's ponder on that. Is this what it says on this plaque here? Is this that what, something what, to do with that? That's, that's a script in, in Irish which says that there was a Norman castle here in 1210 and they were driven out and in 1350 my family were installed and we established this law school. By the way, you're fishing. That's fine. How's yeah. it going? Very good. We've fished at Pool Tumner and Mealick. It, it, it's really good. Yeah. Well, now that's the Shannon. It's only about a mile across here, uh -huh. and you might like to have a view from the battlements. I was hoping you were going to say yeah. that. Come on, <laughs> then, let's have a look. Yes, right. <laughs> well, Mark, it certainly is a lovely view from up here, isn't it? Yes, it's quite a good view, and you can see for miles around. Mm. I can see the river where we were fishing earlier on, but strategically, right now, where we're standing, in which county are we? Well, you're in County Tipperary, mm. in the province of Munster. Where you were fishing today is County Galway 
in the province of Connacht. Mm. And a couple of miles in that direction, you have County Offaly in the province of Leinster. So it's a very strategic location for a castle. Mm. Three provinces and three counties coming together. It's all very together. confusing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was speaking earlier on to somebody downstairs, and they told me there was a, there was a bit of a ghost in this castle, and you had a, got rid of it. Is that true? Well, there was a ghost. Uh, the, the son of the man who occupied this castle in 1603 was killed in a skirmish about three miles from here. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an experience, and I, I associated with that uh, killing. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's no trace of it now. We how, had, how did you get rid of it? Well, we had a mass here, the mass of the triumph of the Holy Spirit, which gets rid of spirits like that. Well, there can't be many people living in a house or a castle like this with this sort of ancestry. Well, I imagine there are very few native Irish. We have Americans coming in restoring castles, mm -hmm. and we have planter stock coming in still living in castles. But this is the first native Irish back in his kinsman's castle. That's lovely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, Michael, thank you very much indeed for showing me over your home and your castle. But I fear that the bream of the Shannon are calling me back again. <laughs> So I'll bid you farewell. It was a great pleasure having you. And you'll come again, and the next time you'll catch salmon. I'd love to. Thank you. Bye-bye <laughs> now. The Bye best now. of luck. Bye. No, I missed it. Well, as you can see, we've moved spots now, about 100 yards upstream of where I was fishing on the pole. And I've changed to a feeder rig cage feeder, breadcrumbs and worm and maggot on the hook. And for short periods here, the bream have been going absolutely potty, interspersed with, you've guessed it, the odd little perch. But we're going to stay with worms because these bream are really whopping them up. A couple of brandlings and a maggot. Stop them coming off the hook. It's not quite as deep as it was further downstream. Casting about 30 yards, letting the line run between my fingers, and they hit bottom. Still quite deep, it's probably about 15 or 16 there. Just hit bottom now. There we are. This wind's a bit of a nuisance, though. And I can't sit down here. Oh, straight in. <laughs> I think it's a little perch, though. <laughs> I think they took that on the drop. Yes, it did. Would you believe it? I can't get away from perch everywhere I've gone. Where you go? I wonder whether the bream have moved out. It's funny that when the rods stop, the perch move in. It's a, it's a sure sign that the bigger fish evacuated to swim for them. Time being. It's rather nice standing here wading. It's uh, amongst the amongst the rushes. Oops. I like to feel the, the feeder down to the bottom. Otherwise, you, if you stop it prematurely, it, it angles in and. Comes in a little bit too, bit too close. If I was sitting down, I think I'd try and hold the rod, but it's very difficult standing holding it still enough. Lovely tall reeds around here. There's even a patch of purple loose strife over here. It's a beautiful spot. Lots of bull rushes and soft rush along the margins. Oh, missed that one. That was a good bite. I don't think that was a little perch. No, it should have hit that one. Go a fraction further this time. I 
I've had a little bit of... Here we are. Here's a good fish. I've had a lot of trouble with these better bream of getting them through these lilies, so we've got to be rather careful. And these Shannon bream really do go. I don't think it's a very big one, though, this one. Go! <laughs> It's amazing, this is, whoop, I've got a boot full. <laughs> it's amazing that these are only to some people bream, which aren't supposed to fight very much, but these are really pulling, these fish. Come on, away from those lilies. Ah, that's turned it. Once they get in those lilies, you've had it. Oh, it's a good fish too. Oh, yes, that is a good fish. There's a lot of these fish averaging four or five pounds here. It's, it's amazing. Really nice general size they are. Steady. This is when they do a bit of a swimmer's roll and... Gotcha! Ooh. Not the hook out. Let's have a look at this one. There we are. About three pounds. Went half a three pound bream, didn't it? <laughs> right, let's put him in the keep now. Only just hooked two. Just tighten up a little bit more. Line round my finger. Pull the rod back gently so the tip's just slightly bent. Little twitch then. Little tiny twitch. Come on, round you go. It's a lovely yacht. It's like it's tying a nice fishing boat too. Like wooden fishing boats. Come on, round you go. Got one here that won't quite. I wonder if it's a little perch. There it is. Look at that. I thought that was a little perch messing about then. No, and it's a good bream too. Hello. <laughs> I've often thought it must be lovely sailing down a river on a day like this. I do a lot of canoeing and scuba diving and fishing, but one thing I never attacked is sailing. Perhaps that's going to be for... Later years, who knows? In you go. Although I've cast about 30 yards there, the line's going absolutely straight down almost. It's incredibly deep. I don't think I've ever fished a river so deep before for bream. It's probably partly why they, they fight so much, because they're, they're on the end of a line and they're directly beneath the rod. Hello. Yes, and you really feel their power then. Oh, I've picked up a lily pad on this one too. Oh, it's great in a bit through those... Those lilies, mind. Is it? Come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh, it's bigger than I thought. It's a real higgledy piggledy here through the through these lilies, and whether I step out and get another bootful or not, that's the only the only problem. I should have bought waist high or breast high waders for this swim. Whoops. <laughs> Still lively. Another nice clean fish. Look at that. Distinct liking for worms. There they are, look. Lovely bream, these Shannon bream. Lovely creatures. Putting a fish back at the end of the day is something I always look forward to but <laughs> I'm not going to here because to put these back properly I think I'm going to get a bit of a yes I am I'm getting a bit of a bootful never mind it is the summer one thing I don't want to do with a, 
a large bag of bream. He's dragged them ashore. There's a lot of fish in here. There's probably... Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's definitely over that magic tongue. <laughs> There's absolutely <laughs> no point in trying to lift these up. Probably 30, 40 fish in there. The nice thing about this particular keep net is that you don't have to drag them ashore and tip them out. You just undo it via a couple of locks like that and the whole of the net opens and you can just let them go. We even caught a little rub for good measure. Lovely fish. Most of these whew, are soaked. Are this sort of stamp too? Four or five pounds. Right, I'm going to ease that out into the into the flow, and then just let them gently go out. Having enjoyed their sport throughout the day, the last thing you want to do is is harm any of them. Where you go? It's a brilliant idea, this net. Absolutely brilliant. Look at that, all fighting fit. Whew, well, we've had some great sport at this particular spot on the Shannon, but I think we're going to try upstream a little further and give that a go too. Well, after that wonderful catch of green near Port Umna, we've now moved several miles upstream to here, at Mealick Weir. It's a really beautiful spot. Probably one of the nicest spots along the Shannon. And remember, there's 250 miles of this wonderful river, salmon and course fishing, and it's all free. And there's a spot I fancy along the catwalk there, just above the weir, where there's some nice rud, perch, bream, and one or two roads. See you there in a minute. The trouble with this river is there's too many tempting spots. Two or three hatches here that I fancy having a go at. But I'm going to try here first amongst the, the bulrushes. The river here comes around in a wide span and goes down the fast weir, apart from a few hatches underneath this catwalk. And it's quite deep here. I've already plumbed the depth. It's about nine, ten feet just off those bulrushes. And then I'm, I'm going to come on a very slow back trot towards me. It's a lovely spot. Some nice sunshine now, too. I've got a 4BB waggler set up, 14 hook, 4 maggots. It's no good using small hooks in Ireland because the fish are easy to catch and if you hook into something big, well, you've only got yourself to blame if you lose it on a small hook. That's lovely. What a beautiful spot this is. You don't often get a chance to back trot. As it comes towards me, I'll just be slowly mending the line, but funny enough, the wind's this way and it's it's holding the surface up and it's almost like fishing in a lake and we're into a fish <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful rud. This is one of the, oh yeah, this is a good two pounder. Oh, let's hope the pike doesn't come along now. Oh, come on. Oh, it's in the bulrushes. Out, out, out you go. Oh, that's a bit of luck. That was around, oh, that's a beautiful fish. I don't know whether to risk picking this out or net it. Oh, look at that. That is an enormous great rat. Oh, look at it. Whoops, careful. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's got to be the best part of two pounds. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? This Irish rud fishing is something else. Let's put it back, whoops, straight away. There you are. What a lovely fish. Where you go. Mm -hmm. 